Greetings. It's mid-January 2022 as I document this and I didn't think I was going to do a DIYery and I still may not but at least I want to document what's going on here for future reference but uh, we recently replaced the toilet here and it was just wobbling like crazy and couldn't quite figure out what was wrong took it off tried to secure the ring a little bit better um, it for background this place was built in 1972 so it's right on about 50 years now uh, and we've redone the tile floor in the long ago but um, not quite 50 years ago anyway it was wobbling I was trying to figure it out I went to go pull the toilet today to see if I could do something to secure it and the entire ring as a piece of the tries to anyway um, the entire ring, which was integrated into the drain pipe there, just came off. Um, apparently it just rotted enough that it pulled right off with the toilet. So I was like, all right, well, we'll, uh, we'll get a different device that we can put in there to replace the ring, and then I'll have to screw it down to the floor. But as you might be able to see, there's a decent sized gap between the drain pipe there and the concrete slab. This is the bottom floor of the house. Uh, and in fact, I think I'm even seeing some rust in there from, I don't know what, but um, I've cleaned it out a bit. Let me show you the, the device. It's this thing here. And it's got the ring. It's got a drain pipe going down. And this thing here actually rotates, and I don't know how well it'll come through, but that thread is actually tapered so that as you move this up, or ultimately as this screws in clockwise, it will tighten up and create a seal. That solves one problem, because this will go inside the pipe here, but it doesn't solve the problem of how to secure it to the floor because these screw holes basically line up with the gap. So I had scratched my head for a little bit and it dawned on me there's a couple of things I can do. Um, I could either put concrete in there, uh, but the problem is that concrete and cast iron don't necessarily like each other. It might take a while for it to rot away, but as it is we lost the ring. The other option I thought of was epoxy, a two-part epoxy that you mix up and stick in there and it'll, you know, might take an hour to set up or whatever, but then I'd have something I could work with. The problem with the epoxy is it is for that much epoxy because that goes down a few inches there, that gap would cost quite a bit. So it was back to the idea of concrete and then it occurred to me I could get one of these. This is a hub hubless connector, I guess they call it, but basically it's got, uh, it's designed to go on a pipe this size. In fact, you can see it, well, hmm, I thought that was going to be a tighter fit. This might be the first problem for me to deal with, but anyway, the idea, and I'm going to have to look at this and figure it out, the idea was to get that, take the clamps off of it, where to go. I already loosened them up just for this demonstration. And then I've got a rubber piece around the pipe which help, would help insulate it from the concrete. So that's the idea. Um, I'm going to try and put that on, do some cleaning around there, do some exploring, figure out what I'm dealing with here. Uh, see if it really is a problem if this thing is loose right now or not. Um, I'm probably going to have to cut it down to fit or pack something in there. I don't know. I'm going to have to figure that out. But that is the plan, and I will come back when I've got the next step. Well, deja vu. I'm sitting on the floor <laughs> over <laughs> another drain. Uh, did this last year. <laughs> Upstairs. Anyway, uh, I did manage to get some work done here. I uh, tried a couple of things and realized a couple of other things. Uh, for one, I wanted to point out there's some fluting there. Uh, I think what that is is actually uh, 
piece of vent pipe, um, like the rigid steel pipe they use for venting a furnace or something like that. And it has a flute at the end, so if they just simply put a piece of that sticking up out of the slab, or out of the formwork, then when they pour the concrete, it would have left that particular pattern there. Um, also, when I tried to stick that piece in here, sorry about the focus, when I tried to stick that piece in here, there were a lot of bumps on the inside, so it didn't want to go in, but now, let's see if I can't, so the idea is this goes in, and you get it, it's kind of hard to show, but there is a piece right down there that I was showing you before that kind of rotates around the thread. But once you get that jammed in there, then you can turn this and thread it in. And when you do, it expands, which will create a better seal. Don't want to go too far with that. I'm going to pull it back out right now. Um, so that takes care of that. The other thing I ran into, and I have to figure out now, and I, I should have, it should have occurred to me, but this is considerably larger than that. It's kind of sloppy on there, but it may still work out. There's not a whole lot of gap there for concrete, but I think with that and that, let's see if we can get it kind of partially wedged in there, and I can see how my screw holes will line up. That means this screw hole comes down yeah, looks like it's almost right up and over. This one is probably right up and over. Um, a little hard to judge on them, but the plan now is, uh, I think first I'm going to cut the lower piece um, to fit so it's flush to the floor, uh, just so it's creating that barrier. Um, this piece will create its own seal on the inside and I think I've got enough room where these screw holes are and outside of that other piece that I can get anchors into the concrete. So the plan would be once everything is cut to fit, I'm gonna have screws with anchors in here already mounted and screwed down. And then I'm gonna screw this down Ooh, I can see a little problem with that. But basically the point was I was going to screw this down until the ring is flush or close to flush with the floor. Um, and with the anchors set in the concrete, once it sets up, those anchors should stay. That would allow me to then back the screws out and make any kind of adjustment I need to make. I hope. Yeah, I'm going to have to do some test fitting before I pour the concrete because I got quick setting concrete. Um, I also have some regular concrete if it comes to that, but that's kind of the thinking. So let me figure out where I am and pick up when I know more. All right, change of scenery. Um, I wanted to show you what I found on the bottom of the toilet. Um, this, you gotta imagine this kind of being upside down from where it should be. You can see the flange from the wax ring. You can see the fact that the wax ring didn't go in straight. That's not a good thing, but hopefully I'll correct all of that. And so we can do this out without getting really disgusting here. Try to flip it over. Oh well, so much for not being disgusting. So there you can see the original flange at the top, and then I guess this other piece was connected to the pipe. Or, well, actually, looks like there may have been a previous repair. I don't know. But either way, we've got to deal with this uh, so we can have the toilet back. And I put, put some of the hardware out here because it's all covered in wax, and i got to figure that one out, how to clean up the wax. Um, I can clean it from my hands with some pumice. That's not a biggie, but uh, I've got wax all over everything, so i got to deal with that. Anyway, um, that's kind of where I am in trying to decide 
uh, but what exactly the next step is um, it's looking kind of like that piece that goes in to the existing pipe maybe just a bit too long but that doesn't quite make sense to me I can't believe they would sell it like that with it uh, in such a way that it's going to stick above the floor. Um, I have to think that even though the threads don't go all the way to the un underside of the ring, that it will continue to, there's enough distance on the threading to make up for that. I hope that makes some sense. So I need to decide if I want to take a $30, 30 plus dollar piece and try and wedge it down there as a test. Because if something goes wrong and I need to get a different piece, that's going to be a little hard to return. So, I need to do some thinking. I may end up picking up tomorrow. We'll see. Okay, I think I have a game plan here. Um, I've been playing around with this a bit and trying to figure out... My original thought was I was going to have the screws going through the holes into the anchors and all set up. And then I would have to rotate it around. And I realized that's just going to mess up the concrete more than it should be. Um, and I was debating, you know, how do I get the anchors in there? And it finally occurred to me, I can pre-assemble them kind of like this, and there's actually one more step here, but then I can, when the concrete is in there, I can eyeball it and get pretty dang close. Um, I think that's what I'm going to have to rely on, and then hopefully at least two of them will be in the right position where I can actually uh, screw them in. Now, the other thing with the anchors, the reason I'm not driving the screws all the way into the anchors, uh, is you know, my original thinking on that was because I don't want the concrete to get into the little gaps in the anchors uh, and then make it just impossible to drive anything in there. But it finally occurred to me I could just wrap some tape around here and that'll keep the concrete out. I don't think the tape, even if it disintegrates within the concrete, I should have a good enough bite and then, I mean, the purpose of an anchor is when you drive the screw in, it expands a little bit. So when it expands, it makes it so that the screw won't come back out. The anchor will stay there and the screw will stay there and you'd be in good shape. So that's, I'm going to wrap tape around all of these. I made as many as I could uh, just in case, you know, if I did four of them and something went wrong. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the game plan. It's about to get really hairy because the fast setting concrete is only uh, 20 to 40 minutes which means that's as much time as I have to work on this now once I get it in there I'm going to use this um, shim to actually agitate the concrete and make sure that there's no air bubbles in there and that should get me pretty dang close to solid I'm not sure if it will I'm hoping it will uh, if it doesn't we'll be without a toilet for a while while I chisel out all of the concrete <laughs> and maybe have to redo some of the tile. Let's just hope this doesn't turn into a big project. Well, hindsight is twenty twenty, right? <laughs> um, oh, I mixed up the concrete, I started filling it in, and then I realized I forgot to wrap the anchors. So I just figured, all right, I'll shove them in there. We'll hope for the best. It was also the uh, Fast setting concrete was a little bit more rocky than I expected. I thought it was going to be a little smoother. Uh, the aggregate was a little too big. But, um, yeah, uh, hindsight being 2020, I realize now that what I could have done is set all four anchors onto that thing upside down with the screw heads being on, on the underside, like right here in there and the anchors being below and then pushed it down in there um, the anchors would have been above the surface maybe but hmm yeah I think that would have kind of worked they would have been above the surface they would have been at the level of the floor um, and then Basically, all I would have had to do is pull the screws out, turn the whole thing over, shove it in, and then screw it down. But instead, I did it the hard way, and we'll see if that works. Uh, famous last words. So, I'm going to call it quits for the day. I'm going to let this stuff set up. I'm going to get some rest, 
pick up again in the morning, hope that everything is set nice and hard, and that I can shove that thing in there and screw it down anyway. Okay, well, it's the next morning, and I discovered that I had a slow leak. Uh, the shutoff's not 100%. So I'm getting a, a just a drip there, I hope. And that was keeping the concrete wet. I don't know if that destroyed it or not, but these are semi-solid in there. And it actually looks like the screw is poking through the side there. I don't think it's supposed to do that. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I have some other bolts that I bought thinking rather than a tapered screw, maybe a, a stainless steel bolt would work better. So I'm gonna try and take one of these screws out, try and put a bolt in and just see if I'm getting anywhere. Otherwise I may have to undo all of this and redo it. Okay, uh, it turns out that the new bolts are just a little bit too big to go in, um, but that actually may work in my favor. I tried screwing these down a little bit further and it seems like they get more solid as they go down, so I think I'm going to go ahead and try and install this thing. Um, the anchors are there kind of taking a place. Uh, yeah, the problem will be if somehow this fails and then I end up destroying the piece to get it back out so I can reset the anchors. If that happens, that's, you know, that's a $32 uh, piece. Um, I don't want to have to keep buying those. I don't mind, you know, a dollar here, a dollar there, whatever, but yeah. Let's just see. I'm going to go see if I can't get this part way in. Then the next problem I'm going to run into is the closet bolts are extremely uh, grimy with all the old wax and everything else. So i got to figure out how to clean that off or just go get a new set of closet bolts because I'm going to need them in order to turn this top piece of this thing here because it, I know once it wedges in there it gets kind of hard to turn to thread it in. So let me take a shot at that. Okay, we're in. I'm not 100% convinced, but we're in. Um, it's pretty dang solid just uh, from banging it in. Forget about the screws. And hopefully the screws will provide at least some sort of lateral support so it won't spin. Um, and yeah, I should be able to get the closet bolts in either side and then get the whole thing mounted. Now I gotta figure out how to clean up those closet bolts or if I wanna go buy some new ones. Okay. We're in, we have the bolts on, and before I forget, <laughs> I did that once before, <laughs> or I forgot that it was there, and it wouldn't flush. Uh, that's together. I've now put the wax ring on the bottom. Cross your fingers. Okay, the toilet install is about halfway there. I did have to put a shim there, and a shim back there because the it just seems uneven and I don't want to cinch it down too hard and crack the ball. So I'm going to kind of leave it like that. I did sit on it just to see if it kind of felt like it was moving and I think I got to cinch it down enough. I'm going to let it settle over time and either the shims go away or I cut the shims to fit under there so you don't actually see them. Uh, it's not as far off the floor as I feared so that's a good thing but I still got to put the tank on so let me do that, and we'll give her a test flush in a bit. Okay, we're filling up. <sighs> Let's see. I don't see any drips down here. I think we're good on that. Not dripping from the bolts that hold the tank to the bowl. Yep, we're good there. Well, That's my imagination. Well, the water 
horizon in the bowl. It's only going to go so high. There we go. A little gurgle. Uh, okay, interesting. This seems the floats at the same position as the overflow. Let's hope that doesn't mean we got a leak, but let's give her a shot. That sounded good. Only just slightly moist, but I think it's because I washed the floor before I put it all together. I think I'm good. This may well have worked. All right, well, if I assemble all this into a video and post it, then uh, if you're curious how it is, you know, one month out, two months out, go ahead and post a comment below and uh, we'll see. Thanks for watching.